Okay, this is the view from the side. We're actually looking at the left-hand side of the skull. It's called the normal lateralis. And what we'll do is we'll just go through the same procedure. We'll name the bones. We'll name some of the sutures. And then we'll look at the features of the bones, the things that are of interest that are going to help you when you start putting some soft tissue on the study of anatomy. And we can see the frontal bone. And you can see the coronal suture running up here. You can see that it's forming the, the top of the orbit, the roof of the orbit. You can see the zygoma, star-shaped bone with its frontal process, zygomatic process, maxillary process. You can see the temporal bone rather nicely here, the squamous part of the temporal bone with its suture here. You can see the zygomatic arch which is formed by the zygoma and the temporal, temporal bone. You can see the external auditory meatus, the mastoic process. Um, the other bone that you can see is the parietal bone here. And you can see that these four bones are frontal, parietal, squamous part of the temporal, and the greater wing of the sphenoid, which is here, form a H shaped junction at this area here, known as a terion. The other bone that you can see is, of course, the maxilla, um, which is down here. You can actually see the lacrimal bone from the side view as well, because you'll notice that the lateral wall of the orb orbit is set back compared to the medial wall. And so there's a lacrimal bone here with a lacrimal fossa, anterior lacrimal crest, posterior lacrimal crest. The other bone you can see, obviously, is the mandible with the, ramus, the body of the mandible, the ramus with the coronoid process and the condylar process. And this is the angle of the mandible here. Let's look at some of the features of the bones and we've pointed out the coronal suture before, we've pointed out the suture between the temporal bone and the parietal bone. Um, you can see the suture between the frontal bone and the zygoma. Let's look at the orbit and you can see that the orbital roof is formed by the frontal bone, part of the zygomatic forms a lateral roof, part of the floor, the maxilla forms part of the floor and the medial wall is made up of the lacrimal bone and ethmoids. Now we'll come back to the orbit as a separate thing. Um, you can see the alveolar arch for the teeth on the side view. Um, on the mandible you can see the infraorbital foramen again, the angle of the mandible, and I've pointed out the coronoid and condylar processes. Maybe worthwhile pointing out on the temporal bone you can see the mastoid process for the attachment of sternocleidomastoid. The Exolonotary meatus and the tympanic part of the temporal bone, which actually forms part of the bony canal of the external ear. And this is the squamous part of the temporal bone. The, the petrous part of the temporal bone, the third part of the temporal bone, you can't see on this view. Let me just point, point out a few other extra features um, that I haven't mentioned. And you can see from the mastoid process, a sort of ridge running back here, and that's the continuation of the superior nuchal line and the other important little thing to work, notice in this area is the supramiatal triangle which is a little triangular area just above the continuation of that zygomatic arch and it's an important area for ENT surgeons and you'll hear about it when we do more on the temporal bone. And the other bone that you can actually see in the lateral view you can just see part of the squamous part, the occipital bone here and part of the lambdoid suture. Uh,